This is IFV, the web space with your dose of business and financial news. In full view, we're making your business our business. Welcome to In Full View. I'm Marcella Palmer. We're bringing you the week's medium and small business news from Nolcha Fashion Week, New York 2010, at Bow Concept Studio in the famed Chelsea neighborhood of New York City. More on that in a moment, but first our top story. Greece was the center of market focus much of the week as European leaders hammered out a deal on resolving its debt crisis. The Brussels meeting bore an act of cooperation in hopes of preventing a broader crisis in the 16-nation Eurozone. Creating a plan that will prevent Greece from defaulting on its foreign debt has helped to push the price of Greek credit default swaps lower. Here's Jean Lee with the market playing field. About half of the North American workforce is made up of women. Enterprising Women magazine is recognizing some of the best, announcing the winners of its 2010 Enterprising Women of the Year awards. Winners noted for generating more than $25 million in annual sales revenues include Liz McKinley, owner and founder of Pinnacle Petroleum Inc. It's a wholesaler and distributor of refined petroleum products and lubricants. Her company generates $100 million in sales. Sylvia Medina, president and founder of North Wind Inc., provider of environmental, engineering and construction services. Her company employs over 400 people and was acquired by CIRI Development Corp. at the end of 2009. Lois Moran and Lynn McCrone, founding and managing partners of Juice Pharma Worldwide, the big teak ad agency assisting pharma companies with U.S. and international launches. Their company became a member of Worldwide Partners Inc in 2008. This month is filled with Fashion Week events around the globe, from Stockholm to Copenhagen. And New York, the fashion capital of the U.S., is no exception. Nolcha is kicking off Fashion Week in New York with 16 independent apparel and accessory designers from around the world. I declare the Fashion Week by Bash open. Fashion Week Fall Winter 2010 is here. Nolcha provides business support and a platform of event opportunities for independent fashion designers and retailers. Nolcha CEO Carrie Bannigan tells us this is their eighth season, showcasing designers between New York and London. Today is an exhibition and not a runway show where we're inviting press, retailers and stylists to really get to connect with the designers, um, talk to them, find out more, get up close and touch um, the collections, learn about their inspiration. We've done this today and not runway shows because we just want everyone to connect. We feel with the way the economy is going and all the talks of the recession and is it smart for new fashion entrepreneurs to be launching and well, we're saying yes and these are the best that we've found on our scouting tours with our creative director Lynn Ferge and we represent these to the industry. This year Nolcha and the fashion community extend their reach showcasing designers from around the world. Many of them are working to give back to their communities. Creator of Imani, Port-au-Prince born and raised designer Catherine Charlot has big plans for proceeds from her collection of recycled umbrellas turned high fashion wear and accessories. Right now with what happened in my country, I feel the need to reach out, to help out, to give a hand. My purpose here today is like, you know, if everything went well, which I know and hope everything is going to go well, whatever I sell, half of that money is going to go towards to build a school in Haiti because education is the key. And I want to have um, a design, art and design school. It's just like to give the young one the opportunity to express themselves because art is all about expression, it's how you feel. Shalot believes there's no such thing as a discarded, useless piece of fabric. And coming from a country where things are pretty hard, I believe in uh, recycle. Meaning, instead of throwing things away, why don't you use it and do something positive out of it? Ileana Rojas Bennett is owner and designer of Maleku Jewelry, which she says is inspired by the colors of the rainforest and designed for the everyday woman. She's a descendant of the Maleku Indian tribe of Costa Rica and is trying to help. Maleku means Indian in love, and I support the Maleku tribe is a, Mal is a tribe in Costa Rica uh, that is in the northern part of Costa Rica and there's 
a lot of need within the tribe. One of my necklaces is, is named after, his name is Angelina, and it's named after one of the tribe members that is the princess of the tribe. I love pearls. You know, pearls also is, is means peace, and it brings peace to your soul. Each of my um, stones that I choose for different, for different pieces of jewelry, they also have a meaning behind. And, for example, some of my pearls, I designed them for, my inspiration was Michelle Obama. And that was the inspiration that took me to make the beautiful line that is Sublime Pearls. Sharon Chindali, creator of Tata Reef Jewelry, is a native of New York City but comes from a long line of Yemenite silversmiths. She draws design inspiration from around the world and is mixing ancient techniques with modern. Tata Reef actually is an element that was repeated in a piece of jewelry, and it's an ancient Yemenite jeweler's term. When I was a little girl, I'd see my grandfather, he'd sit on his bed and make jewelry and like use a torch in his bed and, you know, and he would, it was just always just interesting. I was always fascinated by that. I decided I wanted to do it in about 2003 because I was studying um, musical instrument construction. I was building musical instruments out of metal and wood. And um, in order to learn the metal, I had to start off with jewelry, you know, so you had to learn, because it's basically small scale metal sculpture. So as soon as I learned how to solder, I knew it, that's it. This is what I want to do. Alberto Parada of Alberto Parada Jewelry has created an eco-conscious line of high fashion fine jewelry. I'm a wholesaler, so I wholesale my line to stores. I have a studio where I do design work and I have retailers that carry my line. Um, I got out of the retail end of it to create the line where it would be mass produced for many stores versus just having one particular store. Um, I, I sort of, it gives me a little bit more freedom than being tied down to the retail end of it. Not that there's anything wrong with the retail end, but I feel more comfortable doing what I do. It allows me to dedicate more time to design. I would say that 2008 we probably did about a quarter million. Um, 2010, if we do the same, we're in good shape. Let's put it that way. <laughs> 09, was 09 was a real tough year. Yeah, I'd rather not even say the number. <laughs> I would say my most popular collection at the moment is my rose gold collection. It's um, a lot of architectural design, so there's um, you'll see a lot of straight air, straight lines with accents of diamonds. Not a lot of diamonds, but just enough to give it a, a nice look. It's uh, the blending of the diamonds with the rose gold, yellow gold, and white gold, and some designs where I'll, I'll blend all three of those colors. Nolce is highlighting fashion designer causes, donating proceeds to Haiti, care for Kenya, and donate a design to heal Africa. That's all for this week from the IFB News Team. Thanks for joining us from Nolce Fashion Week, New York 2010, at Bow Concept Studio in the famed Chelsea neighborhood of New York City. Be sure to check back every day right here at ifbnews.com for the latest on what's happening around the globe in the medium and small business world.